and we're both hyper emotional right now and i know that i can't talk to you in a yelling voice or i can't curse at you in that way so i've learned you want to be him because if you're him she will follow if you're truly loving someone despite what they're doing and so i equate it to god we can go shoot up a thousand people god is still gonna love you at the end of the day you don't think love is a choice in the sense of you saying choice I choose to love you. Mm -hmm. Hey, 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 Conscious Crew. We are back on the Conscious Creative Corner podcast where we unpack your trauma to heal relationships. I am your host, Sia, the Transparent Therapist. But before we get into it, I need you to hit that subscribe button and already share this episode with a friend because it's going to be good. I am super excited for this creative that we have on a podcast today. I'm so honored to introduce this creative. He is the creator of the Real Shit Let's Talk podcast, David Nesbitt Jr., also known as JR. He's a father to his children, a bonus child, the owner of Audi 360 brand, where the desire is aiming up to improve. Once known as Mr. ATL himself, but now we could probably call him Mr. Florida, the author of many books, including the 21 Day Accountability Challenge Workbook. JR has become an influential figure, y'all, to many and are still going with his creative endeavors. Welcome to the podcast, JR. JR, what's up? What's going on? What's crack like with you? Yeah. I'm, listen, we just met. But I just knew that you had to be on this podcast because you were a phenomenal person. So kind of tell me, like, what has it been like since Podcast Summit? Being here on the show with me, but then also going to Podcast Summit, elevating your game. What's that been like for you? Uh, the most thing it's been is um, uplifting. Like, this is a two-peat for me. So me and a couple of my people, as you saw before at Podcast Summit, we were, we've been there before, so we've been there and kind of done this thing already. So we kind of know how it rolls and how it goes. Um, I've almost reached a thousand uh, views on a couple of my clips on my TikTok. So I'm definitely, you know, happy about that. Um, and then on YouTube, a little bit more subscribers. I'm almost at 200 per, you know, little clips now that I'm getting at and just growing, you know, slow and steady. But I'm also, you know, about to jump into like a mentorship. So when I do that, I'm about to level up like That's 10x. 10x, right? What is it? What's the book called? 10x is better than 2x, something like that? There it is. There it is. Yeah, that's what's up. So you have this workbook out. You got the podcast out. You've been doing a lot of things. Did you always know that you were just going to be a creative? Like you wanted to leave this impact? on the world did you know that yes and no right because entrepreneurship wasn't taught as a child right and in the courtship of like dating somebody or or learning to be an upright man you went to church you you know you courted a woman you date there and then y'all just he worked 40 hours a week if she worked or she stayed at the house so I was more on that, like learning how to do that. But once I stepped out on a like faith, really, mm -hmm. it was different. It just came to me naturally. Like I don't like a nine to five, but I work a nine to five. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, just to take care of the media bills and then to get some more understanding about what's going on like around me, because you don't know what you don't know. It's better to be not the smartest person in the room and that's why like it was very very intriguing to meet you because you know a lot you're just a little shy or just a tad bit timid because you got so much information that wants to come out at one time and if it comes out at one time it might stumble over the first part but then the next part is actually your execution point that's what i learned about you and i liked it and i was like she she just need that extra ugh, that little push to do it so <laughs> well yes so a lot of my so I would say maybe I'm not shy I think I'm just very reserved with my energy 
um, because I'm realizing that energy is so important and we give it and we can receive it. And I guess depending on who you are, you could say I'm shy. Um, but once I feel that your energy is safe to be around, then mm -hmm. oh, look, we're going to talk. We're going to get deep, uh, which leads me to my next question. Okay. You, so I had to do a little digging, right? Cause you were coming on my, my, my show and I said, I have to make sure I got quality people coming on here. So you used to have a cl clothing line or clothing brand, or do you still have a clothing brand? I still have a clothing brand. All right. So can you tell the people a little bit more about is Audi 360, right? Or 360? Mm -hmm. Yes, man. About that. So the clothing brand, like I went about it the old school way, the brick and mortar way where I was like at pop-up shops, I was doing things like had a heat press machine vinyl. And so I would try to make shirts for people and do things so that I could, you know, pretty much wear what I wanted to wear without going to spend large sums of money on designer stuff because the designer stuff is cool and it's a chance to show oh i got a little bit of money or i got a little bit of style or i got a little bit of flavor and once i did it it took me man like seven years but i was still doing it the brick and mortar way and not the advanced way so like i've made like like what a couple thousand or a few thousand dollars um over the course of time and the amount of money that I put in and the money that I made broke even. So that tells me I'm doing something right, but I'm still missing something else. And when you have children, you have to think about, okay, if I go make, let's say $500, $500, that might be either a car note or that might be your kid's football equipment or whatever the case may be. And you don't see that money no more. So what I've learned to do right now is just to like, stay reserved, stay compliance with, in compliance with it and keep, as, as the saying goes, aiming up to improve 360. So I'm aiming up to improve in my clothing brand, but I know that it'll take a little bit more time to get to that pinnacle point. And as I, when I get there, I'm just going to be like, hmm, okay, I got it. I'm ready to like either re like, we won't say relaunch, but I guess you could say relaunch. Mm -hmm. And I already know I'm coming with some heavy hitters because I got some, you know, always got something in the chamber and always got something in the tuck. So I'm just waiting to just pop back out with it as far as to the journey toward my podcast. Like I wanted to incorporate it, the two together, but one is going to supersede the other. Mm -hmm. And as we learn at the podcast summit, we see that podcast is podcast but it's a business so if you run it like a business and set up the foundation or the infrastructure in a like with a strong foundation and you you know get some mentorship um, you get a little bit of uh trial and error but a le less mistakes in it you can do whatever you want after that and that's what like that's a, i learned that with the podcast and it allows me to hold myself accountable and it allows me to be very boisterous um, or vocal and expand not only just a clothing brand with a good message, but now I have a stronger foundation with accountability because nine times out of 10 in our culture, we don't hold each other accountable anymore. We, we sit there and make excuses. I've made excuses and excuses don't solve the problem aren't the solution yeah i i can relate to that right because we do need people around us that's going to help elevate us and i think you said you're going to be starting a mentorship and it's a mentorship for your podcast business or the clothing brand or is it for something else um for that it's going to be it's a part it's the accountability community okay. um and it's going to be it's going to be more of a community based. You you know, like David has the morning meetup. Yes. It's community based. So I'll help and I'll come on, you know, maybe like every three days, I'll just pop on and say, hey, tonight I'm, I'm going to be, da, da, da. we're going to check your accountability. Is there anything that you want to talk about? Anything that you want to do? Um, leave questions in the comments or like DM me what we need to talk about. Okay. I see. I see. I mean, that's kind of cool. So it's already launched. 
No, I'm working on it. I'm getting the app up and functioning and starting. Okay. Okay. I'm excited for you. So you mentioned too, like, you know, there's been times where you haven't taken accountability. So are you ready to kind of get transparent? Let's go. All right. When in your life have you realized that you, JR, have been the problem? It was a conversation about, I want to say a year or two years ago and some change. Don't quote me on the time frame. But I was talking to my cousin. And my cousin, can we can we curse on your on your podcast? I prefer you not to, but I mean oh. if it comes out, this your space, so go ahead. Okay. I mean, it's just my cousin just gave me the real. Yeah. Um he is a very upfront, straightforward guy. Um, he has toured the world, he's done things, he's made big money, he's lost big money, he's turned around and made the mistakes in his time, but helped me to learn not to make those same mistakes or go down that path for his mentorship or his people that he had around him taught him how, what not to do. And we just had a real conversation and he snapped at my ass <sighs> and gave me the realest like talk ever. I was mad at him. I was like, yo, like, I don't even tolerate disrespect, but he wasn't trying to be disrespectful. He was trying to get his point across. And so a lot of times in that situation, in those situations, just like that, I was like, I started to get sensitive about it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I was like, yeah, I do this. And I've done that. Just this, that, and the third, I wanted to be defensive. Mm -hmm. So I realized after sitting on it or pondering for a little minute, I was like, you know what? I love him. That's my cousin. That's my that's my brother. That's my blood. Like I love him to death. And he has always been upfront, straightforward, open doors, in the sense of like if I need a place to crash, I came in town or hey, some good advice. He's always there. So I have no choice but to say that was a time that I realized that we can blame others, our parents, our friends, our other relationships, our old relationships, our broken hearts. And instead of looking in the mirror and said, you are the effing problem. Mm. So now it's time to fix it. And what are you going to do? You can't curl up in a ball and, 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 and female it out because you a whole man, you a whole dad. So it's different. And once I learned that, like we talk, we don't even have to talk like every day. We might talk two, three times a month or every other month. We just check in and we get the ping pong ideas. And it makes me make sure that like a little check off list sort of like, okay, when we talk about this, what new moves am I doing this? We hold each other accountable about reading new books about evolving to the next level. If I'm not ready, he tells me I'm not ready. I might think I'm still ready, but he'll say I'm not. And at that same token, we'll dialogue and I'll be like, yo, I'm reading this book and I'm I'm getting it. And he'll be like, I see you, I see you. And I'll say something to him. He'll be like, yeah, that's, that's true. And he'll take some little words from me or some kind of good conversations and we just keep vibing. So for you, you, that just a conversation through with him is when you realize like, okay, maybe I am the problem. Why did it take that conversation for you to realize that? A, a lot of things, right? Um, I've learned where in life, certain situations such as like, you know, when you're a teenager, right? You, you think you know it all. Mm -hmm. And your mom or your daddy pushes you out. Hey, since you know it all, go ahead, do your thing. Mm -hmm. Show me, show me what you know. And what I learned about it was I told myself, I said, well, shoot, like I did everything. Um, I have an associate's degree. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I ain't worried about nothing. I, I am smart. I am educated. I just, nah, I didn't major in the right thing. I didn't, you know, and once you start like 
getting it over the 21 and over the 25 hump, you'd be like, dang, you got to start really calculating everything that you do because everything that you do in like it from the past will come back in the future. So what you don't do in your 20s, you will pay for in your 30s mm -hmm. and so forth and so forth. And just realizing that it was close to my 30s that I was like, hmm, damn. I need to get some itch together. I got to mm -hmm. really start putting these needle and thread pieces together because, you know, I do um, have an audacious mindset. Man, that's what brought on the clothing brand. Um, shout out to another one of my cousins that, like, he was, he told me it was several summers ago, but about that, he was telling me, man, you rock with me, man, we're going to get this together. And he was just learning how to edit and draw and all this other stuff. And it was cool. And then I just pitched ideas and made it happen. And as time, bless you. Thank you. You're welcome. And I learned that like, man, once I started depending on myself, like I'm a, I've always kind of, in a sense, been dependent on myself to like either make the mistake or learn from the mistake. And learning that it's a lesson and not like a depressing moment right mm -hmm. now i wasn't taught to wallow in sorrow i was taught to suck it up and keep it going so again having that conversation like a few years ago like say don't quote me on the time frame but when we had that conversation hey i just snap snapped again just mm -hmm. hey i'm on it you said this piece where you said you were taught to not wallow in sorrow, but suck it up and keep going, right? And so mm -hmm. the basis of what I do and how I help people is having them understand actually how they can pinpoint their sorrows, right? Which is why I have an assessment that is a free assessment that everybody, if you're watching this now, you can go ahead, um, take the assessment. The link is in the description somewhere where you're pinpointing where your sorrows are. Right. You're pinpointing what the problems are, whether you're when you're in relationships, familial or platonic relationships where maybe your communications off, maybe you're not allowing <clears throat> open space for people to understand what's going on in your life. And I created the assessment because I want people to really know, like, OK, when I'm going into this new friendship or I'm going into this new relationship, I know I can work on my patience a little bit more. I know I can work on how to show up as authentic as I should. Um, and I think it's just a great assessment. All right. but so you talked about not wallowing in your sorrow. And a lot of what I talk about is actually pinpointing your sorrows. So for you, do you think you were taught not to wallow in your sorrows because you didn't necessarily have a safe, like an emotionally safe outlet to talk about some of the things that you were going through? Because one, you're a black man. Well, one, you're black and two, you're a man, but you're a black man. And I know that in society, you guys carry a lot on your shoulders, right? And just talking about your emotions or talking about what's happening for you could be a sign of weakness. And that's something that's perpetuated throughout um, society. So for you, were you taught not to wallow in your sorrows because there was nobody to say like, all right, JR, I hear you. Let's talk about it. Let's kind of process it. Yes and no. It's... <laughs> Sometimes you have to learn uh, certain things that you just can't give too much energy to. We spoke uh, briefly about energy. You learn it later on, but as a child, I mean, I had a good, I had a pretty decent childhood. I'm not going to say it was like heart stars and horseshoes, but I had what I needed. I had the tools and the resources necessary to perform and to become a good uh, individual. Mm hmm as well as a stand-up person. Now, with that on the other hand, there's some things that I had questions about, like, as I say, relationships and different things of that nature, just learning. Like, I can learn from my mom and I can learn from my dad, but I would say just, I, I, it's so crazy, the guy that just came in um, to help fix the AC, he was just saying how dads are so important. And I was like, I, I agree. Because we do carry the weight of the world or more on our shoulders and we can't be too emotional because too attached to something that means nothing doesn't help the solution in certain cases. 
Not saying that your emotions aren't important. Not saying that you can't cry. Not saying that you can't have a depressing time frame or, or, or moment, but you can't sit derived into it because the way of the brain, in, in, in my words, is that if I start thinking sad thoughts, something bad happened. Okay, cool. I'm sad. I'm emotional. I shed some tears. I keep thinking about it. Then other thoughts come to my mind. Then other thoughts come to my mind. And I just keep going along that same little wave line until either A, you could snap, or B, you just sad all the time. You got to take pills. Not to say that it's wrong for people that do take medication or anything like that because some people need it. So I'm not going to ever say that. I'm just saying that sometimes the, our thoughts are the number one thing that keeps us going or we keep going on with that same thought. Mm. So you, you, you mentioned this and it's a concept that you didn't necessarily have words for. Maybe you do know about it. So when you're saying that you can't be too emotional, right? You're right. Um, one of the things that I practice with people and I teach people to practice is operating out of wise mind. Have you heard that term before? Mm, I think so. Okay. But you can refresh my, my, my memory or I was going teach to me something, Doc. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, Doc. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. But um, wise mind just means that you're pulling from both your logical your emotional mind, right? So you think about it as like a Venn diagram, right? So you have your wise mind, your emotional mind. Sometimes when we are too far on the spectrum of emotional, we're going to make emotional like decisions, right? And then when we're too far of logical, we're making too logical of a decision where we're not thinking about the humanity, right? Because we're humans, right? Um, of the decision. And so when we blend those two together, we're in the, the Venn diagram, we in the mid middle, that's when you have like a semi-perfect decision. And so when you're saying like, hey, I can't lean too far into the emotional, you're right. You shouldn't, right? So we can acknowledge it. We can acknowledge like, hey, I'm in this space. I'm feeling this way. But then you also want to pull on your logical. Well, logically, does this make sense? And I'm going to acknowledge that I'm feeling this way as well. And so, you know, you said you had a really good childhood, which is great. Not everybody can say that. Um, you're a dad. And remind me, you have all sons? Yes. Okay. And so when you are showing up for your sons, um, I don't know if they live with you or not, but when you're in the presence of them, how are you showing them that it's okay to be emotionally safe with you? So one of the biggest things that I try to do is have the either open-ended conversations. We're saying that like, uh, here's an example. It's, I have an open door policy we can talk about whatever. If it's really alarming and concerning, I got to talk to your mom about it. Got to let her know, or we have to see what's the root cause of it, right? Once I get there, we can talk about it. We dialogue, um, any text message, any phone calls, any video chats, any anything. It could be rain, summer, sleep, fall, whatever it is, I just allow that open door policy because I travel for work. So when I travel for work, I'm gone for like weeks to, well, we'll say days to weeks to weeks to months. And that adds up over time of things that you miss. So in that amount of time, I miss a lot of things because I'm trying to make, you know, make the money, the nine to five financial, you know, obligations of bills and things they might need and different things of that nature. So I also try to make their games like, like I got my, my parents, um, they're really good grandparents. Um, if I can't make something, they'll pretty much step in and they'll make sure that they, they show up. Cause like one thing it is, we're going to show up for you. You might not feel that I'm there all the time or you miss me as much as I miss you, but we understand, like, I love you. Like, and I express that the love that I have for you is unconditional. I try to break it down. It's not like, oh, I'm a, you know, kiss you on the cheek or kiss you on the lips type of love. Like I have to break that down to them. It's like, I love you 
as if I'm going to make sure that you are disciplined, that you are respectful, and that I hear you. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times as, as growing up, we weren't heard. However, now these kids need to be heard and they'll listen mm -hmm. and not let them so much fall and bump their heads. Mm. So you're, you're providing that, that warm space for them to say like, Hey, we can talk about anything. Yeah. And you know, the value of being listened to, right? Cause I'm assuming as you were growing up, you had people that would listen to you and not like dismiss your thoughts. Right. Right. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's super important and we call that secure attachment, right? So do you, do you know the difference between like secure attachment and secure attachment, things like that? I heard it in my psychology class. I should go ahead and refresh my memory. I'm gonna keep calling you a doc, but you'll get, you, you, you'll dock in my eyes. I'm just saying that for the record. A lot of people do that. And I'm like, I don't, I can't be recognized as that, but whatever's going on in there, that's fine. But with secure attachment, it's just basically saying that your foundation, right. With your caregivers. So, cause some people don't have parents, but, um, aunts, uncles, grandparents, foster parents, it was secure enough for there to be like open dialogue, right? It was secure enough for you to feel safe um, and not ridiculed, minimized. Then we have our insecure attachments, right? So that's like anxious, avoidant, um, disorganized. Disorganized people might have had a lot of trauma happen. And I'm just giving you a real quick synopsis, right? Because I can go on for days about this. Um, avoidant people are just like, hey, I might be in a relationship with you and as soon, I, I don't want to talk about no problems because I'm afraid of being alone, right? The same thing goes mm. for anxious, avoid, like anxious attached people, anxiously attached people just like, hey, I want to talk about this problem because I'm afraid to be alone, right? And so we, we develop those things in our childhood. So perhaps you had a parent where it's just like, yeah, I don't want to hear nothing that's going on with you right now. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to be fine that you could possibly fall into like an avoidance, right? Because your parent wasn't allowing you the space to be open and direct, right? Or you might see your parents be super anxious, like, oh, dear, don't go outside. You're going to get snatched up or you're going to get shot, mm -hmm. right? Those are all things that are that we instill into our kids, which then affect them in their adulthood. And it makes it insecure. So when you happen into like a business relationship or romantic rela relationship, you might start to see yourself mimic some of those things because of what happened in childhood. And we just don't understand how our actions as adults are so foundational for our children. And so that's why I ask, like, do you know if you said you had a good, right, um, upbringing, but mm -hmm. sometimes good isn't necessarily good. It just became normalized, right? And it could just be, I mean, right. Um, but after mm -hmm. hearing this, do you feel like you had, <clears throat> don't use the word good, well, do you feel like you had secure or insecure? Because I don't want nobody mama coming up on here and cussing me out. So, I mean, nobody's going to cuss you out. At the end of the day, um, I had strict parents, I had lenient parents. I had parents, one thought one way, one thought the other way. And, you know, I would say just for the record of how, it, how upbringing, I would learn more of the emotions and how to deal with them a lot better from my mom. Mm. I would learn how to, with my dad, I learned how to, as they say, suck it up buttercup. Mm -hmm. Because there's things that you have to do as a man that's just, emotions just don't lie there. It's like, I would say, um, I taught what, my eight year old how to walk. And I have the video to this day where, you know, not saying anything wrong with women, but just saying like, he, you know, if baby falls down, you're like, oh my God, you're okay. Blah, 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 blah. Me, I'm looking at, okay, there was no sticks. There were no stones. There was no dirt. There was no glass. There was no hill, there was no mountains, there was no step, and you just fell. And you caught yourself. I'm cheering you on. You got this. Let's do this. I used to call him fat. I was like, come on, fat. You got this.
one step in front of the other. You got this. That is right here. I'm never leaving. You're number one. Like I'm always speaking like positive affirmations. Mm -hmm. Always speaking that you can do anything you put your mind to. And he walked. And he stumbled. But he was happy. Mm -hmm. And he was okay because he did it. He did his little hands like this. He got up and he just did it. And, you know, that was like a sign right there where it was like, hmm, I'm always like going to tell him that you are amazing. You are smart. You are the man. Like, I'm making sure that you know that you're number one out here. And he is resilient. Listen, I'm going to tell you one other quick story. There was a wild horse in the field of his peoples. And they was like, hey, don't go in this fence and touch or pet or feed the wild horse. You know what this little kid did? Went in the fence, walked over there, petting the, petting the horse. And something that we talked about energy. They could not tame that horse for months or get that horse to even be calm or patient. But he was standing there right next to that horse, petting him, talking to him, and they couldn't believe it. So I always say, the energy that you possess is good. It's of gold. And God is going to continue on blessing you. Fear no man, but you're all right, man. It's been working ever since for me. Now, he cries. Yeah. He gets in trouble. Yeah. He gets a little spankings every now and then. Yeah, of course. Who doesn't? Mm -hmm. However, for me, I haven't had to spank him. I pop. Like, you know, how we do, like, we, you know, white people say pop, pop. And like, hey, I'm about to tap that, tap that behind. You know, <laughs> you, know how we, you know how we talk. Mm -hmm. However, right, and he understands. But he's a smart individual. He knows a lot. Um, and as well as my 12 year he's he had to make some mistakes himself. And he's an awesome football player. He's gotten straight A's for like the last year, year and a half. Um, and he continues on putting his education in front of everything. Um, he's Like I said, again, he's really good at football. Um, he's an excellent basketball player as well. Hmm. But he's really smart. And I said, and you know, got a little little baby, so he's awesome too. So he's just drooling and everything else. How old is he? Four months. Oh, little, 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 little. Oh, you doing it all over again? <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is, it is what it is. Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's, it, it's good seeing you talk about your kids, right? It just kind of shows me the enjoyment that you have. Um, not everybody likes being a father, right? Um, and it looks like fatherhood means a lot to you. So I appreciate you kind of sharing those stories because it just, again, highlights the security that you have within yourself to be a father. And then just the, I guess the, the respect you have for fathers as well. Right. Um, mm -hmm. so I do appreciate that. So we're going to go one level deeper. Okay. Okay. I preach boundaries on this show though. So if there's ever something you do not want to answer, just say like, I don't feel comfortable answering that. Right. But if you had to heal any relationship, it doesn't have to be romantic. It could be one with a, a partner, a friend, whatever. What would be that relationship that you would want to have he like healed from the past? Hmm. Would probably be a, a deeper relationship, probably like with my dad, maybe. Mm. Um. Just because, even though my mom and dad divorced, you know, you live on one side of the tracks, and then you live on the other side of the tracks. And then now you're just on that straight path of you're grown now. So 
I've done my journey, you know, I've did what everything I had to do. And that's just with the mere fact that I'm learning that with me is that just because you're not with the child's mother or anybody like that doesn't mean you stop being a father. It just means it's that much harder to be a father. And that's some of the challenges I face because remember, I travel for work. So I'm missing a lot of stuff. And you can't, and one thing, you can't make up for lost time. And I think that would be the mending relationship with my dad. I would be, y'all, y'all, y'all going to Costa Rica? Hey, hey, I'm gonna put a hundred down. Can you, can, can you, uh, say, go ahead and just pop, pop me a spot. I'd be on the floor in a blanket. I'm going, you know, I would put myself in more of the realm of, hey, we're going to do this father and son thing. Like we went fishing all the time back in college. Like That was good. He taught me how to grill, taught me how to um, change a tire, put on brakes, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Fry fish, you know, cook some other things, you know, different Mm -hmm. things of that nature. But I would have loved to do more traveling because they get up there in age. And, you know, when your parents get up there in age, you know, they don't move like they used to. So, I think that would be, we would travel more. We would have traveled more, did more things, um, maybe develop where we get all the green children together, boys, get them all together, and we go camping, and we go we, we go to Disney, or, or, or we are going like overseas type of ordeal, but, but we're giving them exposure. We're working together. We're doing this, trying new foods. Like, we're going out there and living, but not so much as always doing something, but also, hey, let's put this garden together. Let's let's do something. Let's learn something. Let's let's sit down and let's watch. Let's go to the Lions football game or the Dallas Cowboys football game type stuff. That's all. So you would have more connected time with your dad is what you're saying? Yes. Why do you think that's important for you? Because they get old and the only things that you have to hold on to when they die is memories. Mm -hmm. And as such, memories do what? Fade as you get older. Your memory is not as sharp and as good as it used to. So you take pictures, you create photo albums, you either, hey, record videos because something that David Shans was talking about, his kids would never be able to hear his dad's voice or how his dad taught him. Yeah. And that's hurtful to him as well as the kids are missing out on that little piece of valuable information that was like back in the eighties, back in the nineties, mid two thousand. you know what I'm saying? Like he learned these things. Mm-hmm. And he's instilling this into his kids and he's instilling it to us as all podcasters and as a businessman or a businesswoman. So it's like, I would love for them to see, hey, this is me and your dad. We was in Mexico. Or this is the video where we was, you know, doing the cha-cha slide and we both can't dance. But you see, we, we got two left feet, but we make it, you know, it's just those little intricate moments that make the memory last longer but also it hold you hold a a, a a small attachment to it where it's hey my dad did this for me i'm going to do this for you and then you can change the narrative however because maybe your kids are not like that maybe they want to play fortnite like that's something hey i'm gonna get my headset and i'm gonna get fortnite and hey let me know your login hey log me in on the game and we mm-hmm. plan, and that's our moment. You know, it could be different. So that's all. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so, if you did get some more of those moments with your father, how do you mm-hmm. think it would have changed who you are today? If that was the case, I nine times out of ten, me and my dad, we would talk more. Okay. We would definitely talk more. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be necessarily like four months before we talk, six months before we talk, 
two months before we talk, a week or two, like maybe every couple weeks. Or it's like, hey, I was just thinking about you, man. I just want to say, hey, I don't really want nothing, but all right, stuff like that. And it sounds like that would really be impactful for you. Right yes, because I've learned, I had to learn it the hard way with mine. Yeah. You don't want to reduplicate what you've been through or what little moments happen, but you are your father's child. You are your mother's child. So there's things that you do like your parents and you have to unlearn them or maneuver around it to make it better. Will it be perfect? No. I don't ever think it would have been perfect, but it would have been a means to a possible closer relationship. For sure. For sure. And, you know, when you talk about things like that, it just reminds me how important community is, right? Especially when you Mm -hmm. don't have all those experiences um, with your loved ones, whether they've passed or you're just distant because of, like, proximity. And I have a community where I talk to people. Um, I send you two texts a day, two to three texts, I'm sorry, a week, where we're talking about things with relationships and Mm -hmm. your family and your attachment. And for those of y'all watching who do want to drop into this community, all you have to do is text the word stress, S-T-R-E-S-S, to the phone number 860-401-0207. And there you can just kind of join our community, join into the conversation. Again, you get two to three texts a week where there are prompts, reflective prompts, where I'm asking you things about your childhood and for you to sit and be with those thoughts and memories because they're super important for you as you grow, as JR has stated just now. So are you a part of a community? I know you're part of MMU, right? Are yeah. you a part of MMU? Mm-hmm. All right. You Was you on there this morning? I'm on there every day, okay? Don't be trying okay. to check me. <laughs> just kidding. Just saying. <laughs> no, I was. Um, I So I'm, I'm actually new to MMU. For people that don't know, do you want to tell them what MMU is? I mean, it's the morning meetup that uh, David Shands, um, the entrepreneur, he's a podcaster, that he created a community for entrepreneurs and like-minded people to come together where they center around getting better at what they do or center around the idea of like-minded people who have audacious goals or don't necessarily have the formation or formula to get to the next level. How long have you been a part of MMU? It was going on like year two. Oh, yes. That's, that's kind of cool. I've only been... Uh, maybe five weeks. I've been a part okay. Of yeah, hey, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. You know, after a month, you, you know, you become a little bit now. A little bit. That's what <laughs> we'll go a with that. <laughs> we'll go with that. But it's invaluable. So that's why community is like super important, right? And you build connections, right? So I was, I guess, because of MMU. Actually, because of MMU, I am also able to connect with entrepreneurs like you, Jr. Right. And so, yes, yeah, join the community. Again, it's 860-401-0207. You text the word stress to that number. So yes. I and Go ahead. No, I like that. I'm going to have to do that. I need, I, need that uh, I need to figure out that stress. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, so for a lot of people, um, Stress is something that we kind of overlook and we think it's super normal. The reason why I started the stress community too is because uh, trauma, right, is a form of stress. And we don't like using that big T word. I think it's like very triggering for people. Because if I, I think I even had a, if it wasn't you, it was somebody else, but I was just like, do you feel like you've had trauma in your life? And automatically you're like, no, but that's because your defenses and the person you're just like, hey, we don't want to acknowledge that or touch it. But if I use a softer word like stress, I'm like, yeah, I got stress. Right. And so trauma is just an elevated form of stress that diverts you from your regular thinking. And so if I can get people to think a little bit more about trauma in a very normal way, we can alleviate some of that so you can have healthier relationships. Um, So, yeah. So what's coming down the line for you, JR? So coming down the pipeline for me is, of course, you know, 
21 day accountability workbook, you know, that, um, also building the community, um, around accountability. And we go through things that you need to be held accountable for, because just as much as it's important for you, it's important for me to help as many and touch as many people as possible. Um, one of the things I learned is reach one, teach one. Mm. I do not know it all. Mm -hmm. I make mistakes. Mm -hmm. I've fumbled the play. I've fumbled the bag. I've fumbled relationships. I've fumbled a, a slew of things, you know, it's entrepreneurship stuff. But at the same time, I get up and I keep going one foot in front of the other. I have to shake it off. I have to have my moment of grief or my moment of disbelief and just stick to it, make it happen. Like, excuses um i've been working on it that's one of my accountability things it's not giving excuses providing a solution mm -hmm. how can we get this done and execute i help people in my accountability community hold themselves accountable as well as i'm and show the importance of why accountability makes you the man or woman that you are sustainable in today's society whether you're black white green purple orange doesn't matter we work together, but I'm trying to get to that point too. I'm working. I'm still building the community. It'd be in a WAP app. Um, and that's a subscription community. Um, I have a Facebook community, um, as well. You just type in real ish at, you know, on Facebook. And then I've seen the link. So you probably add it in there. Of and course. Just type it in there. And basically in that community, what I do is I type in daily affirmations, right? So when I type in daily, aff when I type in daily affirmations, it doesn't matter what time, like I usually have a preference either in the morning or the afternoon. Um, I do my best to stay consistent in putting affirmations in there. And every now and then I drop some of my clips from my podcast in there. Right. Mm -hmm. But eventually get enough people going building that community up and transition to the WAP app which would be a paid thing the it what app WAP w you never heard of it no it's um hold on let's see real quick I have it up for you is it like mighty um mighty networks yes, yes like that okay but it's it's the WAP app. Okay. Yeah, W H O P. Never heard of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. okay. You got a community, so you're gonna be transferring over your community to from Facebook to WAP, or you're keeping both. Um, I'll keep them both. I okay. have both because I would want people to feel free. Like eventually, when people do comment or as people say some things on Facebook that we want to talk about, and again, when we go to the 21 day accountability, like people that get that right now they get it and the challenge now i know a lot of people don't really have a lot of time to do things as such so what i learned to do is i am the type of person where now for those who do get the book um i'm going to join it and we're going to do the whole 21 days together and i'm going to show up for myself as well as showing up for the people that join in or that tap in and we're going to go live probably like every three days. Hey, this is what my accountability looks like. This is what my book looks like. This is what today's like. Talk about it. Hey, I'm at the gym. Hey, I might be five o'clock in the morning, but I'm out here. I'm getting it. I'm getting up to it. Or I might have to go to work today, but I'm going to have a positive attitude. I want to have that meditation moment. Hey, I haven't talked to my kids in a like couple days or a week or whatever i need to set a destination time for x y and z and i want to show people that i am just as human i am just as vulnerable however i'm a leader and so at the end of the day i'm not gonna just it's a uh, i'm not gonna make it where i'm just harping on one person uh, some things i gotta say to myself and help people along the way build up their accountability from either from drinking too much coffee or drinking in general 
or not enough water intake, cigarettes, whatever the case may be, we're going to mend everything together and work as a team. And, you know, of course, I'm going to send them your way. If they be like, I'm stressed, I'm going to send them <laughs> definitely your way. I'm like, yo, hit Doc's line, stress, here's the number, da 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 and she'll help you out. And I know you want to keep some stop saying that but it's just it's so form-fitting for you i just want to put that out there well i I received that i received that um this community sounds fire though i mean you're jumping in with us right we're Mm -hmm. we're you're holding not just us accountable but yourself and we know that when we see our leaders doing well we want to do well too right and so right i'm excited for your community how would someone how would you help someone that wants to join your community that is undergoing trauma? How would your accountability um, group, community, and workbook help for them? So there's an assessment um, sheet, such as yourself, that I'd like to get to see where we are. Mm -hmm. And in this assessment, we will probably end up setting up maybe like a five, 10 minute call, maybe, or an email, a formal email, like from the results of the assessment. And I would know what like angle to really come at. And it's like, hey, you are not the problem. Or you are the problem. Let's let's call the elephant in the room. And I'm not here to be mean, but I'm also not here to be a daddy. Okay. So at that at that same time, I know that they're going through trauma. So I'm gonna be understanding. I'm gonna be open minded. I'm gonna be sensitive enough to where I like the way that my mom always pretty much taught me she would tell you how to do something show you how to do something but she always kept it provoking you to think outside the box it's like hey here's this box okay how do I get the shoe or whatever into this box yeah I can pick it up yeah I can get um, a pair of uh clamps and put it in there options preparing them to think for themselves and hearing what their thoughts are and their thoughts might be really really bad and then we're going to say changing the mindset first mindset meditation Mm -hmm. and then a conversation Mm -hmm. and as we talk through it we start weeding out things that were causing you trauma or we're fixing it one day at a time Today is not like yesterday because today is a new day. Always aiming up to improve is the motto as well as holding you accountability or accountable. So now it's working through it, not working around it, not working under it or over it. We're working through it. And it might take a couple of days. Tomorrow, like if it's day one, it might be horrible. Day two still might be horrible, but it's not as less horrible as, you know, that day. I like Before. that. I like that. So you are holding the hand, but you're not their daddy, but you're still there with them in the trenches. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, well, I appreciate you kind of sharing what's coming down the pipeline because people always want to know, right? People want to know how they can connect with you, especially if they're watching this episode and they're like, hey, you know, Jr. I really, I need to be in his presence. Like, I need him to help me because he has a lot of words of wisdom to say. So I appreciate that. So we've come to the time in our episode called For the Culture. Yeah! All right. Um, for our first time listeners or viewers, I am Jamaican. And for the, long, for the longest time, I guess I could say I've had some cultural trauma just kind of migrating or immigrating into the States. And so I feel that to mitigate that, I try my best now to incorporate my culture in whatever I do because I want to be proud of it. And now this is my opportunity to share my culture with you. All right. So you're from ATL, right? No, you're from South Carolina. I'm from, I'm from Atlanta. You're from, you're not from Atlanta. No, I am. I, listen, I am from Atlanta. And I live all over because I'm not staying where I'm at. <laughs> where do you live right now? I love keeping you on a mystery roller coaster. 
Or no, Florida. Okay, so you are in Florida though, but you're from Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Where did I? Did we ever have a conversation? You talked about South Carolina. Did I make that up? No. <laughs> okay. Whatever. <laughs> so. <laughs> no, What's it's just like earth? to be honest. With you, look, just to be honest with you, like I've lived in quite a few states, right? And again, like South Carolina is was a place of residence at one point. Okay. And I lived in, like, say, I lived in Atlanta, lived in South Carolina, I lived in Florida, I moved out, I lived in California. You know, I lived in so many different, very various places, and I've learned that I like Florida. So, Florida is pretty much where I'm. Feel like I'm gonna be. Yeah, are you? You're not on the run, are you? Really? Why would I be on the run? I, I'm a businessman. You hold Ooh, on. something else. I... <laughs> <laughs> that's just because that's because see when you travel for work you live in different states. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you don't like it was reside as like when I travel it was reside that I lived in the Carolinas and then another part I lived in California. You know it was just the variations. So that's why. I mean, we had this conversation probably twice and you done told me like a thousand things. So I'm just trying to piece it all <laughs> together. I can't. I can't. I, just I mean, if you're a witness protection, we don't have to say nothing else. We could just stop right here. It's fine. It's fine. No, nah, we're all good. Okay. All, good. all right. So the reason I asked is because depending on where you're located, I've had some people on the show who have actually never encountered Jamaican people. And there's other who are like, yeah, they're my neighbors, right? Um, mm-hmm. Or... They're actual Jamaicans, right? So mm-hmm. for you, do you have any experience with like the Jamaican culture? Because I mean, you live yes. in Atlanta, so it has to be yes. Yes, but I mostly found them in Florida because see, when I went to school in Florida uh, yeah. for college, um, my brother and um, his, his uh, mom is Jamaican. My other brother, he's Jamaican uh, from Connecticut. And being in both households or surroundings, you learn things. It's a different type of culture. It's like y'all talk. It's like y'all. It's like broken English, but you understand the whole sentence or the food that you eat. It's enough food, not just to fill your belly, but just to make sure you ain't coming back for seconds or thirds because you done. And y'all can cook and throw down. Y'all cook with a lot of herbs. Um, spices here and there, but <laughs> she's just laughing at me. But I, I had it all. Okay, okay. So this is what it looks like. All right, I'm gonna give you. So since you said you have a friend, right? Um, this might be brother. easy for you then. Bro, you said brother, two brothers. Mm-hmm. What is okay? I don't know what's going on. Here. <laughs> <laughs> you made balloons come up. If I do this, does it do something? Nothing happened. No, but you say you have two brothers. <laughs> and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you a word. Um, I'm gonna say in Patwa, and you just try to tell me what the um English, like regular, not broken English version is, okay? So you might know these already then. Okay, you ready? Let's go. All right. So when I say big up, what does that mean? I'm lost on that one. You stumped me on that one. It means up. Use, let me, yeah. So let me use it in a sentence. Ready? Um, big up yourself. Oh, like boss up. Eh, sort of like respect or like congratulations, kind of like oh, you know, you're doing good, right? Can you use it in a sentence in your accent? Yeah. You got um, one. What you want me to say? Uh. Okay, you done the work, but big up yourself. There it is. Why don't you talk more in your accent? Because I'm speaking to I speak to Americans when I'm speaking to like my my friends. Yeah. <laughs> how did how did that conversation to go? I just kind of want to hear it for the culture. Uh, <laughs> not you. I don't know you. It kind of just depends on what we're talking about. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you call your homegirl right now and she answered the phone. 
yo, where that parent, where I go on, where do, where do today, you know? Like, I need people to speak to me. Like, I don't know. What do you want me to say? I mean, Tim, we're going to the store today. We're going to the mall. We're going to get shopping. Hold on. Spend. So we're not, so we're not, we're not switching this over though. Okay. You got to keep going. So <laughs> if I say Guan, what does that mean? It's been such a minute. So no, I don't know. Okay. Wild Guan. Wild Guan boy. Okay. What is, what is Wild Guan? Mean? Like, where are you going? No. Like, what's up? Like, uh, Wild Guan. Okay. Do you listen you to a lot of reggae? you listen to reggae? Very little, but I'm into it. Okay, come up north, okay? Okay. Have you been to New York before? No. I'm so surprised. You've I'm lived everywhere. Surprised myself. You've lived everywhere. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take it real. You said this earlier, okay? Um, but I'm gonna use a different Breda. Brother. Yeah. Yeah. What's well, like your boy? Your, your, yeah, your brother. It's like brethren, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. See, you know stuff. Boy. I'm I'm doing like real surface level ones then. Boy. Mm-hmm. What's the boy mean? Like, I'm, I, I want to say when I've heard it, it was about we're doing, we, uh, da, 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 da. Man, it's been such a minute because I I have to catch it. It's like when I'm in the moment, like I'm almost thinking I'm Jamaican. Like, <laughs> not even like, assimilating. <laughs> no, because like it's and to be honest, it was really cool because it was like the transition. Like I have Bohemian in my family, but you know. No Jamaican. I'm like, dang, if I had just a little bit, oh yes, I'd be a rude boy. There you go, boy, root boy. Yeah, like boy, 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 I mean boy, boy. Right. Yeah. Just you can't be, be no gal. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you can't, you're, are you can't. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey, yo, let's talk podcast. Yes. Yes. Wow. Um. So for my listeners, so if y'all been watching my last episode, I taught y'all what that means. So hopefully, can you tell the people what it means since you since you used it? Tell them what it means. You just can't be out here. You just can't be out here being a being a little thought or a little hole. on these streets. You hear you yeah. heard it here first. Jr. is not a gallus. So he says, who knows? So, last one. John- <laughs> wow, not to just undercut and just said that little piece. Wow. I've been nothing but respectful to her. And I've been nothing but genuine. <laughs> I'm, she call- I'm alive. Oh, man. Like, it's-, it's so crazy. Real quick, this I know you've got to finish. It's okay, crazy how we met at the podcast summit. I don't remember. Actually. And I know, but we just clicked. So okay. that's what I'm going. That's the point is that we clicked. And it would, didn't really matter where she was in one room. I was in another room. Somehow we just kept crossing paths. <laughs> and then we actually had a conversation. And that conversation was like, it was, it was dynamic. It was one of those, you're a good person. You you you've got a good spear and a good head on your shoulders, and you're out here trying to help and work and help like change the culture as we go along. And I liked it, and I felt like we had a little bit of alignment where you're helping people with their stress. You're um, a therapist that talks to them that they can, you know, come out and just share their stories with you. And for me, I'm just holding them accountable. Like, what change do you want to see in yourself? If you want to see change yourself or you want to see change around you, it starts with yourself. Mm-hmm. So, you know, 100%. I just want to say that. I mean, no, I appreciate it, though. I, I remember you threw me you threw me into the fire. Right. Had me. I forgot who we was talking to. <laughs> but, oh, but. Lord. But <laughs> I, I would say this because I did it. I do it again. 
I mean, because, for sure. Because because you're ready. Because I mean, I knew you was ready, and it was so crazy. I, I say this: I was stressed the day before the podcast summit. Oh wow! Stressed as I don't know what everything could that could have went wrong went wrong. Remember how we had the issue with pay hip for you? I had yeah. the issue with pay hip for me. I oh. had everything. So a lot of things were just going left, and it was really in a tight bind of trying to put everything together, and. I had a moment of, I had to, you know, break down how I felt and realize, I'm going to get out here and go make it happen. Mm. And it was just a switch. And everything after that just flowed. I mean, you pushed past that pain, right? Whatever it was, you pushed past it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, yeah, I had to. And because I came there to do I came there to network and I came to do a job. And if the thing if you love what you do, then what you then what you end up doing is for the love of how or what or how you helping people, it helps you. Like it gets you to that next level. It puts you in that mindset where you said again where we talked about the people who um if they had trauma, say, Listen, I had to share some tears the other day and listen. I realized I am trying my best and I told myself I'm trying my best. I've already gave myself the affirmations. I already gave myself, but to hear constructive or to hear just criticism in a derogatory, but negative way, but then you're still making, you're different from the culture or you're different from what people or society has deemed you to be. You got to know that Mm -hmm. I've been there. I've lived in it. I've wallowed in it. I've, gotten gained weight i've lost weight i've lost friends i've gained friends you know so it's i don't believe there would be a place that a person with a lot of trauma could be where i wouldn't be understanding for sure so i just learned to cope with that go ahead no i said no i said i was just affirming what you said i said for sure because you've been close to it Mm -hmm. Yeah. and not not to negate it though like I had the realest conversation with my mom. I said, I had tell her like, listen, mom, I've had moments where I was just so sad and I was just, I was depressed, but this was years ago, like in my like mid twenties, like nobody checked on my mental. Mm. Nobody asked me how I was doing mentally. They asked me how my day was, that's fine. Mm. They didn't ask how I was doing mentally. My spirit was, intact because I did my best to make like time for church or to hear some type of word or play some gospel music or whatnot but nobody checked on that it was you got a child you need to work hey now you're a real grown man now da, 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 da. Woo, 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 woo. Mm-hmm. and to talk about it and get it off is one check mark closer to a breakthrough from a breakdown and also open up the door that I have to learn with my kids that they're going to be sensitive, either hypersensitive, hyper emotional, or they're going to have their seasons. And and it's kind of funny. I don't want to say it like in a way where it's like sexist, but men have their periods. Okay. So, you know, it's like, hey, let's get over that. Can I throw some science behind there? Oh, Lord. Go ahead. Since you're over here clicking, I heard the clicking of the pen. You start writing down things. Well, nah. So, I mean, no, so men do have their periods, uh, but not really periods. You just go through a time in which your estrogen levels are heightened, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Just like how when women have their cycles, right? And so there are times in which you guys are actually super, super sensitive, right? And you, it's very cyclical. So I hear that 100%. Ja know. Which means God's know. God knows. So I'm not even going to ask you. That was the last one right there. All right. So, I mean, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's been a pleasure. Like, I, I feel like I really enjoyed this conversation. Um, 
I enjoy what you have coming down the line because I think it's just very valuable to society and everything like that. I do have a problem with you, though. Um, at no point, I don't know what's going on. At no point did you ever tell me you had a clothing line. Like, so is this like under wraps or? I told you I had a clothing brand when we talked. No, you didn't. I did. When, when? I said I do a lot. We talked. I told you I had a lot of things that I do with the podcast. Like I was telling you about my clothes. I told you about my clothing brand. When? It might have been quick, like a quick combo, but I didn't dive into it. Cause I went and talked to, you know, um Tooliness. Who? Tooliness. That that was the guys like if you okay. Matter of fact, you like the picture. I believe you like the picture on my Instagram. Oh well, the, those talking. like well, two guys. It was like you Yes. Were, who are who, who were they? They are clothing brand owners. They're millionaires and oh, stuff okay. with their clothes. And so I was talking to them about it. And it was just like what I learned is that the clothing brand wasn't making me as much money to sustain the lifestyle that I need to live to take care of me, my family, or people around me. Sure. So I had to lay – it's not gone. I just have to lay it down just on on on, on base and just be like, hey – now that I know, I need to put some stilts and some stones and some really more foundational things in the structure and then let it take off in that way. So, like I said, I talk about it a lot, um, but I've learned that in in the sense now I have to talk about my podcast because I know the podcast <coughs> would take me a lot further than my clothing brand. I mean, it's a business too. It is. And that's where I have to maintain that at a little like base level. And then I'll turn around and it'll come back. Like it's there. I'll do a relaunch. Okay. I got some stuff in the chamber. I still got stuff locked away right now, ready to go. I'm just, it just costs money to make money. Makes sense. And yeah, it's, it's a little bit more than, you know, the pockets can stretch on that right now. So. No, I, I get it. I was just like, maybe, okay, so I'm not going to, maybe I just don't remember. Um, But like when I was doing my research, I was like, oh, this looks really good. Like he never mentioned any of this, right? Um, But I get it. Uh, would you be a vendor once you kind of relaunch? Where? At, like any, like, like do vending. Like would you be, become a vendor of your things or do you have like a brick and mortar? No, I would do, I would be, I would definitely vend. I would definitely be vending. Yeah, I would would do a couple of them. And then, you know, just like I said, slowly online, you just be like, hey, hey, put your order in today. I would come to you in um, seven seven to ten days or something like that. And boom. That'd be cool, though. I mean, you yeah. were doing it before, so you just have to restructure and make it work, right? Because you have all these... That things. part. So, okay. That part. Tell the people how they can reach out to you if they want to connect with you. You can connect with me at Real Shit Let's Talk podcast on all social media platforms, as well as on YouTube. And if you needed to... Um, get a copy of your 21 day accountability book. I would tell you to email me at David N at R S L E T S T A L K the word podcast.com and be in the touch and we'll make it happen, man. All right. Uh, yeah. I better take him up on that offer too. Right. Make sure you get in touch with him. Listen to his podcast. You're on all streaming platforms, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I just and I got everything correct. And the latest episode just dropped called The Call to Action featuring Nisha, Six Figure Strategies. Listen, I'm doing numbers with this one. And like it's going to be it, it, it's it's that one. It, it's that, 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 that one that you'll be like. I'm coming back for more. Yeah. I seen some clips. And I'm also sending you something. I'm also sending you something, man. Once I know your size, I'll send you something. You should tell me your size. Okay. I'll do that. I can't I can't I can't bring I can't say Yeah, that. yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I know. I want to tell you right now. That. I'm a large. I'm fine. It's fine. I'm yeah, large. I just want to. Yeah, I got you. I just, <laughs> I want to put it out there for you, let you know, because I, I am definitely grateful and thankful, and I would like them to tap in with you, man. You got to teach me. You you're teaching me a lot. I try. Yeah. My goal is to have people come onto the podcast and teach me something, and then I in return, teach you too, right? And then obviously it's a win-win for everybody that's listening, right? Um, right. I just think that um, our minds play such a huge role in our decisions, right? And just learning right. how to unpack some of that stress, some of that trauma, it can propel us so f- like further than where we are already, right? We just have to acknowledge right. that, and that's a problem. It's unacknowledged. So Thank you for dropping your show, your socials. And for those of you who are still wondering like how you can work through certain things while having a relationship and maintaining your money, make sure that you watch the video that's going to pop up right here where I talk about bad boys and you want to watch it because I have a lot of great nuggets in there. All right, y'all. It's been a pleasure sharing this space with y'all. Make sure you walk good to keep the vibes high and I will see you on the next episode. I, I can't with these boys.